how do you resize a group of photos efficiently if you don't have Photoshop? My name is Michelle and I'm going to show you how to resize images using a tool called Canva. I recently got the question, how do you resize images for blog posts that need to be the same size? In this scenario, they were going to go into a gallery and in order for the gallery to look nice, all of the photos needed to be the same dimension. Now Photoshop is my go-to tool when I resize images, but for clients who don't have Photoshop, they need an easy tool to make these changes themselves. That's where Canva comes in. You can set up a Canva account for free and they do offer a premium version. I actually pay for the premium version as well because when you do get access to all of their stock photography, and if you've ever purchased stock photography, you know that that price can add up quick. Canva is only $120 per year for the pro version. So for me, it makes up for it with all the access to the premium templates. So I'm going to dive in and show you how I would resize multiple photos with the same dimension. So I'm currently on the Canva dashboard and I am going to click this purple button up top to create a design. Now it asked me what I want to create. It says, do you want to do video presentation? It has a lot of options here, but I don't really necessarily want all of those options. My go-to is just using the custom size. If I'm creating a blog post and I know that all of my images need to be the same, then I want to make sure that I'm setting those dimensions. So I would hit custom size and then I would give the dimensions that I want. So this is going to be in pixels, but I can always change that as well. Gives me the option to do inches, millimeters, or centimeters. I'm gonna stick with pixels. And for these images, I'm gonna say 800 by 800. So this is gonna make it a square, obviously. And the 800 just comes from, I don't like having extremely large images on the web. You wanna keep the file sizes to a pretty reasonable size. So 800 to me is usually a good size to have a photo. I probably wouldn't go beyond like 1200 wide. And the only time I ever go beyond that is if I'm doing an image that takes up the entire width of the page, which I might set at 1600, just to keep file sizes small and able to load quickly. So 800 by 800 pixels, that's what I'm gonna go with. I'm gonna hit create new design. And now you can see that I am in the template editor. So I can go up here and you can see that it says untitled design. I can put in a title here. So I could put something like blog images and then clicking out will save that. And then you can always see that your changes are being saved and it'll have a little message up here to indicate that it is saved. So I want to actually import images for my blog post. We'll see over here that there is a bunch of templates that you can use. And a lot of times when you hover over it, you can see if it's part of the free version or if it's, I think I saw one up here that as part of the pro. If it's got that little crown on top of it, that means you have to have the pro version to use that template. But it's actually pretty great. If you are not a designer and you need to make something quickly, you can use one of these templates. You just pull it in and it will allow you to switch out the photos and put your own text in. So kind of nifty. I'm just going to hit control Z to undo what I did. And then I will, I'll just show you a few more things. So we've got different elements that we can pull in. So whether that's different shapes or photos, I've got the ability to look through all of their gallery of images that they have, all of their stock photos that they offer. You can actually search for things and it will pull up relevant photos. I have the ability to insert different text styles. So if there's something over here I can see, I can just drag and drop it over. They've got different video templates and videos that you can use, which is really handy. And then if you have a pro version, you can actually upload your own logo so that if you're making things that are branded towards your company, then you have easy access to access those there. But for now, I'm gonna go up to the third tab down and I'm gonna go to uploads. And so in order to upload media, you could just click on this button and then you have the ability to import from either your device, which would be your computer, your Facebook account, a Google Drive, Instagram, or Dropbox. So many options to upload. I actually chose the device option earlier. And if you see today, I'm going to be using photos of my dog for this example. So we've got four different photos of Mr. Bentley. Now, hopefully no one will be harmed from cuteness overload, but I will show you how to resize these images. So all I would need to do is come over to the image I want to use, and then I would drag it over. Now I wanna show you something. If I were to drag it to the middle of the canvas, you can see that it is not 
filling the canvas. So I'm gonna hit undo here. If I drag to the very edge, it's gonna snap and it's gonna fill to the canvas. So that's kind of a nice option if you wanna resize images quickly. To make adjustments further, double click the photo and then that gives you uh, the ability to move it. So if I wanna recrop this in a way that feels better to the canvas, then I can do so. If I needed to make adjustments on the corner, I could actually pull the corner and make those sizing adjustments there. It's not gonna go any further. It's not gonna let me to drag it in any smaller than the full width of it because I've kind of got it set to the background, but you could make those little adjustments there. And so if I think that that looks good, I might push him up a little bit. I think that looks fine. If I wanted to, I could do this individually for each photo and then have them in all in their very own file. To me, that just seems like a more tedious process. So if I wanted to do a bunch of photos quickly, I would then go to this button that says add page and I would click that. And then I would take my next photo and then I would drag this in and reposition that slightly. That looks good. Maybe I'll make it a little bit bigger just so he fills the space more and then that feels weird to me. So this is just the designer and me going nuts. Okay, that looks good. Again, same process, add page. I'm gonna snap. I think that's adorable and I'm gonna leave it. And then the final photo of, yes, him taking a nap in his favorite location. And I think that looks good too. So everything looks pretty good. So how do I get these images individually saved? All I need to do is come to this button that says download. And then I now have the option to select a file type. I could do PNGs. If I'm doing web images, I don't really love a PNG unless I need the transparency, just because PNGs tend to be a little bit bigger in file size. So if I click that drop down, I have the ability to export these as JPEGs. I could do PDFs. I could do a more high quality PDF. If you pay for the pro, as you can see the little crown there, you could do SVGs, you can actually do MP4 videos, and then GIF images. So I'm going to choose JPEG because I like that one the best. You also have the ability to change the size of it. So right now it's one times the size. We can see that it's 800 by 800. If you wanted to export it bigger, you could. I would caution you to be very, very careful when you're doing that just because you do run the risk of pixelating the image if the image wasn't originally this large. So if you don't mind a blurry photo, potentially you could do that, but I would definitely make sure to just be cautious when you're doing that. I, I don't see a big benefit of, of actually making it way bigger. I think it's always a good practice to build at the size you intend it to be. And then I can adjust the quality. I would typically do anything from like 70 to 80. This is just going to affect the overall file size. So anything from that medium, you can see that little tag underneath there that says file size medium to I think 80 puts it up at large. That's just, you know, the overall file size. So when you're working with web images, you don't really want them to be big because that's just gonna slow down your site. So something always to be mindful of. The next option down is to select the pages. Now it says pages, but it will individually export these. And I have the ability now to either export all four images if I wanted to, or if there was a specific one, let's say I had to come back later and readjust you know, page number one, I could export that one by itself. But if I wanted to batch these really quickly, I could just hit all of them at once. Now, if I'm ready to go, they're all JPEGs and I think everything looks good, I'm just gonna hit the done button. And that will mean that all of my pages are selected and then I can hit the download button. And it'll take just a moment and it's downloading all of those images. Gives me a pop-up saying that it was a success. 
I'll click out of that box there. And then you can now see that I have a zipped file that downloaded. So I'm just gonna double click that zipped file. So I just unzipped that folder that was called blog images, which was actually the title that we named it, if you remember. And then I can now see that I have four individual JPEGs that I can use. They're all a pretty reasonable size around or under 100 kilobytes. So I think that's definitely good for uploading to web. And that's it. So if you have to come back to make any edits, the nice thing about Canva is that it saves everything into your dashboard so that you can always come back later and access these photos. It's going to save everything in its cloud storage, which is great. So if you're on the free plan, you get five gigabytes of cloud storage. And then if you do bump up to the next tier, which is the pro tier, you actually get 100 gigabytes of cloud storage. So you don't have to worry about, you know, taking up a bunch of room on your computer. You can just save everything in Canva. And then if you need to make adjustments or add more, then you can always come back and you can find your saved file. So let me know what you think. Hopefully this is an, an easy solution for you if you are needing to resize photos. If you like this video, I would love for you to hit that like button. And if you don't already subscribe, please do so. I would really appreciate the support. As always, if you have a topic you wanna see, leave a comment and I can film a video on it. I'll see you next time and thanks for watching.